everybody, it's time for another wrap up and another to be read list. Uh, I managed to read 16 books last month and that's been pretty consistent. I'm really surprised at how much I've been able to read lately. It's probably the most that I've been consistently reading for a while. Hopefully the nice weather will eventually get here. Hopefully. I need warmth and I will be able to read outside this summer. That would be really nice instead of this cloudy coldness that I really don't like. So, White Hot Kiss by Jennifer L. Armentrout, and I gave this one three and a half stars. I found it really enjoyable. I really like the plot and the different creatures. In this one we get gargoyles, so that was a nice change from all of the vampires and werewolves that are really typical in books. Um, I did find the plot a little bit predictable and there were times whenever there seemed to be a lot more focus on the romance instead of the ongoing potential death plot that was going on. The uh, Geography of You and Me by Jennifer E. Smith and this one was also three and a half stars. So this is pretty, t uh, this one's pretty typical Jennifer E. Smith, you know. Um, it's contemporary, it's a little bit predictable, but the writing is really good, it's really easy to read. And the characters in this one are really relatable. Part of that may have been because this was set during the big blackout that happened a while back, and I was actually reading this one while our power was out, so it was really easy to relate to the characters as they were going. Death Sworn by Leah Cypress, and I gave this one three stars. It was like the concept of this one, but in a lot of ways it did fall flat. The description of the place where she was was really pretty and vivid, but other than that there was almost an insta-love and there wasn't a whole lot of character growth as well as the world building wasn't really all that tight. A World Without Princess by Soman Chinani. Chinani? I'm not quite sure how you pronounce his name still. And I gave this one also three stars. I like this one more than the first one, but the same problems that I found in the first one were also present in this one. You know, a couple of the characters were just really annoying. The plot really moved, or the plot moved really fast, so there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity to see the growth. It just kind of happened instantly. Prisoner of Night and Fog by Anne Blankman, and I gave this one four stars. I enjoyed this one a lot more than I thought I would because it is set from, or it's from the point of view of a German girl in, right, leading up to World War II, and it's not a point of view that we really get to learn about whenever we were studying the wars in school, but I felt really easy to emphasize with this character, and there were a lot of historical facts woven in that were, didn't make me feel like I was learning, it just felt like part of the story. They didn't feel like they were just stuffed in there. Zack and Mia by A.J. Betts, and I gave this one three and a half stars. It was a little bit predictable, but also funny, and the character of Mia did get on my nerves a little bit, but it was also understandable the way that she was reacting to things because of her situation. Rebel Bell by Rachel Hawkins, and this was the group read-along for the month, and I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed this one. I was a little bit hesitant at first because it seemed like it was going to be one of my pet peeves where the main character gets bunch of powers and it's just kind of instant badass syndrome where we don't get to see it develop but the way that it unfolded it actually made sense there was a lot of snarky dialogue that would be really quotable the characters were great and it was just really enjoyable Dear Killer by Catherine Ewell I um, think that's how you pronounce her name and this one was one and a half stars out of five. I had a really hard time with this book. The concept was really intriguing, teenage serial killer, but um, it was really hard to emphasize or care about the main character. It didn't seem like the author did a whole lot of research into the way that forensics works. Eric Light by Jocelyn L. McQueen. I gave this one three stars. It was, again, enjoyable, really good concept, but ultimately predictable and a little bit slow. Something Real by Heather Demetrios. This one was my favorite read of last month. I gave this one five stars. 
It just had everything that I like in a book. The pacing was great. The characters were great. The main character had her complete arc, but all of the side characters had little things going on as well. There was romance, but it didn't overpower the story. And there's a lot of good talking points that are brought up in this book as well. So it was just one that I'm definitely going to be rereading. The Things You Kiss Goodbye by Leslie Connor, and I gave this one two and a half stars. At first I thought I was really going to enjoy it, but the more we, the more I read, the more I found myself not really enjoying the main character, and I just kind of wanted to shake her a lot at different points of the book, and then things seemed to happen just for shock value instead of for actual storyline. You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson, and I gave this one four stars. This one was really, really good. Um, a lot better than I expected it to be. Uh, I really liked the idea of this girl getting a list of things that are outside her comfort zone and deciding to do them, and the growth that she shows throughout um, completion of this list, and why she's do or why this list was sent to her was really interesting. And I really enjoy the cover too because it's just this is summer. This is summer memories. Creativity Inc. by Ed Catmull, and this one is more of an adult book, and it's a non-fiction book, so it is completely outside what I normally read, and yet I really enjoy it. I gave it four stars, and this is the story of Pixar Studios and how they started off really small and how they grew, how they merged with Disney. There's all these little stories about the movies that they've made, and there's so much that I never knew that I'm really glad that I ended up reading this book to learn about. Breakup Artist by Philip Siegel, or Sagel, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that last name either, and I gave this one three stars. I was actually lo really looking forward to this one, and it was enjoyable for the most part, but I had a lot of, ha I had a really hard time relating to the main character and her reasons behind why she is the breakup artist. And she just, the more that I read, the less I liked her. So that made it really hard to enjoy the rest of the book. The Tale of the Body Thief by Anne Rice, and this one was three stars. I am reading my way, or I should say rereading my way through the Vampire Chronicles. And I really enjoy the first few in the series and the later ones, but the middle ones I'm just kind of getting through in order to reread the entire series. So these ones coming up aren't really my favorite of the series, but I am reading them anyway. Great by Sarah Benincasa, I think is how you pronounce that name, and I gave this one two stars. It's a retelling of The Great Gatsby, but with teenage characters, and there's just a whole lot that I did not enjoy about it. The characters came off as shallow and spoiled and bratty, and I just could not find any sympathy for them for the most part. Uh, those are all of the titles that I ended up reading in the month of April and the ones that I'm planning on reading in the month of May. Royally Lost by Angie Stanton. So this one's a contemporary and seems really good for a summer read. Daughter of Smoke and Bones by Lainey Taylor because I own the entire series and I really need to get on reading this one. Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. This is one of the series that I wanted to finish before the end of the year. So this will be the last, this is the last one in the series and I am currently reading this one. The Eternity Cure by Julie Kagawa. So this is the second in the Blood of Eden series, and it's another series where I own all of the books, so I really have to finish this series as well. City of Lost Souls by Cassandra Clare, and I want to read this one because City of Heavenly Fire is coming out at the end of the month, so I really need to read this one before I can read that one, and I want to read that one whenever it comes out because the longer I wait, the more potential there is to be spoiled, even accidentally. So another book on my made to be read list is City of Heavenly Fire. And the last book on the list is Take Me On by Katie McGurry, which also comes out at the end of the month. So in the last week of this month, there's going to be a lot of reading because one of those books is over 500 pages and one is over 700 pages. So that's going to be a lot of reading. <laughs> So that's all for now and I'll see everybody next time.